time for another free video drum lesson. This time we're going to take a look at that drum solo that occurs at around 3 minutes 20 into the song No One Knows by Queens of the Stone Age. Drums by Mr. Bonham's secret love child, Dave Grohl of course. And uh, you can get the free drum notation for this drum solo from my website. Just click the link beneath this video and you'll be taken to um, the web page on my website where you'll be able to download the free PDF music. Um, you can also check out the other video drum lesson that I've done on another part of this song, um, the, other, uh, the other miniature drum solo that occurs earlier on in the song. There'll be a link here which you can click on. And uh, if you appreciate this video, please do share and like it. Um, join me on Facebook as well. But right now, let's crack on with the lesson. So we're feeding the whole drum solo in eighth note triplets. There are four beats to the bar and each of those four beats is split up into three eighth note triplet notes. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Three notes per beat. And the tempo is around 171 BPM. So we've got this sort of tempo. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So relatively fast. And what Dave does is he plays his bass drum all the way through on all four beats of those um, uh, on all four beats. So we get one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, da, 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 da. Dave's bass drum foot is playing all the way through on the quarter notes. The sticking isn't complicated. What makes it complicated is the dynamics. We're just playing right, left, right, left, right, left, pretty much all the way through, the single strokes through triplets. But it's the dynamics, the loud and quiet notes, the accents and the ghost notes that make it sound like Dave Grohl. And that's certainly what I worked on the most when I was learning this drum solo, was trying to get those dynamics to sound nice. Um, it's, uh, it's okay getting the right drums in, but if you don't get the correct accents and ghost notes, loud and quiet notes, it doesn't sound like the way Dave plays it. So um, let's take a look at bar one first. What we're going to do is we're going to leave out the bass drum foot. We're going to play all the notes on the snare drum just to keep it nice and simple to start off with. So for, bit, for bar one, we're simply playing beats one, two, three, up to beat four as triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four. And beat four happens to be the left hand, ends on the left hand. Starts with the right, ends with the left. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four. And of course you might want to practice that as well, being able to play alternating singles on, on one drum with the bass drum being played every third note. You work out that your right hand comes down with the first note, your left hand comes down with the, the second grouping of three, and then right, left, alternates. Right, left, right, left. So practice getting that smooth and comfortable first. That's so going to help you with this. Um, so let's now um, look at the dynamics. So what we're doing for beat one is we're playing the first and the third note loudly, and the second note, the left hand, happens to be, is written in brackets on the notation that's played quietly. So we get one triplet, one triplet, right, left, right. Now we can leave out that left hand, which we'll go over in a second, but for now we'll keep it in. Right, left, right. And then for beat two, the first two notes of beat two, two and the triplet, trip of the triplet, are played quietly also. And that happens to fall down with the left hand. So we get uh, two uh, left, right, played quietly, and then the rest of the notes up to beat four are played um, at a normal loud volume. So um, uh, we come back in with the normal loud notes with the left hand, and the last five notes are played at a normal volume. Left, right, left, right, left. So let me play that slowly for you. It sounds like this. One trip, look, two trip, look, three trip, look, four. One trip, look, two trip, look, three trip, look, four. One trip, look, two trip, look, three trip, look, four. One trip, look, two trip, look, It's those ghost notes that make it sound like the way Dave plays it. If you leave them out, which you can do, a bit trickier to play the, the, the second part of it, but you can, you can do it this way as well. It doesn't sound quite the same though. Um, but certainly that second ghost note on the lut of beat one, the left hand, the first ghost note that's, that's played, that's, that's the one you can certainly leave out if you find it a little bit too tricky and just play. However you want to play it, but Dave keeps the ghost notes in, keeps it nice and um, makes it help, helps it to flow, helps to give it a certain groove. Okay, next stage, let's um, orchestrate the hands around the kit. So for the first bar, beat one played on the crash cymbal. So the first loud note played on the crash cymbal, and then we're going to play left quietly down here, and then right hand back down to the snare drum. And then finally what Dave does is he moves the last two notes, the lut of beat three and the four, 
up to the high tom. So we actually get this. And because Dave has such a whacking great high tom, it sounds very, very deep on the recording. It sounds like it might be playing the floor tom. I've seen drummers on YouTube play this various, various different ways. I've seen drummers um, split the last two notes over two different toms. One way I saw, a very good way of, I saw of doing it was to play medium floor tom like that. Now Dave hasn't got a medium tom set up in the studio or when he played with the Queens of Stone Age live. It was just high tom and floor tom. So we're only worrying about these toms. But if you do have a medium tom, you could also use, um, you could play it this way. You do end up crossing your hands over a little bit. It doesn't feel as comfortable for me. And that's certainly not the way Dave plays it. Dave does actually play it on one high tom because the second of those high tom notes uh, on beat four is falling with the bass drum underneath. It sounds a bit deeper. So you actually get this didda effect. But on the recording, it's definitely just the one drum he uses. And you can see him do it live as well. Um, so as I said earlier on, you can leave out that second left hand ghost note on the Lutter beat one and just play right live instead of the, the flowing. So it's up to you how you want to play that. Okay, let's move on to the second bar, and it's exactly the same as the first bar, except we're just replacing the crash symbol at the beginning, which we played in bar one, with the high tom instead. So we actually get this. By the way, notice that the right left comes up to the high tom. So we'll go up to the high tom, starting with the right hands. Right left, like that. On to bar three, and we've got um, uh, basically um, beat one and two of the previous two bars repeated twice. So we get um, uh, two groupings of six notes. The first note is played on the high tom, and Dave naturally makes the second note of the six slightly quiet. The left hand is played ghosted again. So we actually get... It's not quite as strict as, as, as written on the notation. You don't have to literally go loud, quiet, uh, then uh, loud, 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 loud. But it kind of, it kind of builds up in volume. It's, it, it's, it's a feel that Dave has for this part of the solo. It's using like uh, crescendos and decrescendos and, and, and all that good stuff. And he's sort of using dynamics in feel to make it flow. So it kind of gets, uh, it gets louder towards the end of beat two and then louder again towards the end of beat four. So we actually get this. Hard to play out of context without the flow of the, of the solo, but um, you'll see what I mean when I play it for you in a second. And then on to um, the fourth bar, and it's exactly the same as bar two, i.e. it starts with the high tom, and we play up on the, floor, um, the high tom um, again at the end of beat three and um, beginning of beat four. But what Dave does is he continues the flow of triplet notes all the way to the end of the bar, so four triplet is played as well and we play the last two notes of the bar on the floor tom. And again, what Dave does is he naturally makes those two notes quiet because his hands are flowing around. You know, so, uh, the way he plays it, he naturally plays the floor tom notes a bit quieter than these two high tom notes up here. So it's hard to hear on the mix, but that's what he's playing down here on the floor tom. Now when you're practicing this, don't worry about, oh my God, I've got to play those, those two floor tom notes really quietly and you're focusing on, here comes the two quiet notes. Just, just play and make it flow. And if you hear the song enough times the way Dave plays it, you'll sort of naturally pick up the way he does it. Okay, let's try the whole of line one at a medium sort of tempo. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Bit faster now. One, two, three, four. And up to tempo. Mm, 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 mm. Something like that. Okay, let's, let's take a look at line two now. Um, and what we've got um, is a bit more simpler with the orchestration. We just got crash cymbals being used. So for bar one, the whole bar is played, this is line two by the way, the whole bar is played on the snare drum one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, apart from the first note with the right hand played with the crash symbol. So we actually get one triplet, 
One tripler, two tripler, three tripler, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can use either crash symbol. Excuse me, it doesn't really matter. And Dave, again, naturally makes that second note slightly quieter, the lut of beat one, and it sort of builds up in volume towards the end of the bar. So we get something like this. Hard to replicate his style, um, but that's really what goes on. And bar two is exactly the same as bar one. So very, very simple in that sense. Bar three, what we do is um, we accent beats one and beat three on the crash cymbal. And I like to use two different crash cymbals, but you can use whatever you like. Um, so we actually get one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. One and beat three on one crash or two crash cymbals, whatever you want to do. And then beat four is exactly the same as beat one and two. It starts with a crash cymbal, except at the end of the bar, we go up to the high tom, for the, um, for the uh, 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 second, um, sorry, for the last four notes of the bar, we got the high tom and then the floor tom. Exactly the same as the line above it, bar one, as we saw um, for, for the previous line. So bar four is actually. And you don't really naturally accent that, that third note of beat one. You just kind of build it up in volume. Like that. So now let me play for you the whole of line two at a medium tempo. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And up to speed. One, two, three, four. Like that. Okay, on to line three. And um, what I've done is I've split up the last line of the solo, um, the, uh, the last four bars of the solo over two lines. So line three is actually just two bars long. And uh, we get this alternating triplet crash cymbal effect. So again, remember the bass drum's going on all four notes of the bar. And what Dave does is he alternates the crash cymbals on the first note, beat one with the right hand, and then the, the, the single stroke continues. And then the left hand naturally moves up to the second crash cymbal on beat two, and then the right hand for the third crash cymbal on beat three, and then the rest of beat four is played on the snare drum. So we actually get this. One step, two step, three step, four step, one step, two step, three step, four step, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right. So get good at playing. As well as those two things you need to be get, um, get relatively good at doing, playing um, the quarter note, um, feeling the triplets underneath, uh, sorry, playing the quarter note here and playing the triplets on top, and then also getting used to alternating those crash cymbals as well. And then, um, so, so let me play line three up to speed, it sort of sounds like this. Okay, and then the last line we got this herter, this herter rudiment, which I've explained in the previous video, you can check out that previous video um, here, there's a little link I'll put up, um, and uh, it's basically um, being played through eighth note triplets again, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, but each beat, instead of having three notes in it, we're having four notes in it. So each beat actually has four played notes. We're counting three notes per beat, but what we're doing is we're doubling up the first note, the one and the two and the three of each beat, into two notes in the same space. So get good at counting one triplet, two triplet, and doubling up the first note. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. You could also count it instead of uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, you could count one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two, three. And the sticking Dave uses is right, left, right, left. One and two, three, one and two, three, one and two, three, one and two. Like that, and the bass is being played underneath. So you might want to practice that quite a bit because that's um, a, uh, a little lick that takes a little bit of practice. But the counting is really important. Make sure you feel those notes um, correctly. One and two, three. One and two, three. Not. It's either e it's easy to play all four notes at the same rate as each other. It's not that. It's. So make sure you get those, that, that spacing correct, otherwise it won't sound correct. 
And what Dave does is he plays um, that herter, the first grouping on the snare drum, the second um, on the high tom, the third beat three on the snare drum again, then back up to the high tom for beat four. The next bar, we move back down to the snare drum for beat one. And then he plays both beats two and three on the high tom. And then finally, the floor tom is played on beat four. So for the whole of that line, we get um, uh, each group of herters played uh, snare, high tom, snare, high tom, snare, high, high, floor. With the bass drum underneath. Now, if you wanted to, you could play um, the uh, beats three and four on the floor tom instead of beat three on the high tom, beat four on the floor tom. It's up to you how you split those, those last three groupings up on different toms. It's up to yourself. Try that a bit faster. And so up to tempo. That's sort of how it sounds, isn't it? And then the final thing we've got to do is to be able to hit the crash cymbal at the end of that on beat one of the next bar and choke it. So we're going to hit the crash cymbal with your right hand and choke with your left. Or sometimes what I like to do is right choke with the same hands. So you get... You don't get two, you don't get two bass drum notes. You get a right hand strike and then with the same hand you go to choke it, grab it uh, to stop it from ringing. So the last uh, three lines sound like this, up to speed. Well, let's do it at medium speed to start off with. One, two, three, four. And let's try it up to speed. One, two, three, four. Bosh. Like that. So um, now let me uh, play for you, um, like from the beginning of this video, the uh, whole drum solo up to speed. Sounds like this. Cool beans. Well, I hope you found that enjoyable. I certainly did. That was a great little fun video lesson for me to record for you guys. I've been meaning to do that for a long, long time. Uh, again, if you, uh, if you appreciate this video, please like and share this video with others that you may think may be interested. Please go to my Facebook page, subscribe or like my page, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can check out um, my website and find hundreds of video drum lessons, uh, a, lot, a lot of free video drum lessons as well, but you can also download and purchase whole song tutorials. Um, and plus also do check out my drums, um, Drum Masters video song pack, which is um, six DVDs worth of uh, videos, charts, ebooks, just a whole bunch of goodies. And uh, currently on, on, on a discounted price uh, for this Christmas. Um, so uh, make sure you do check that out and uh, uh, order relatively soon before Christmas so I've got time to, to deliver it to you. Thanks very much for watching this video. Until next time, happy drumming. <laughs>